good afternoon. Today, we're going to talk about the winner's mindset. Well, you got to stop thinking about the things you cannot change. The average person worries about many different things that will never, ever happen. And there's an opportunity cost for thinking about these things that will never, ever happen. This morning, I did a live stream talking about the wealth gap was really a skills gap. And I, I, I think, I feel that I've done a pretty good job of running off most of the hoteps. You know, it's been many years. Many people know where, what side of the fence that I'm on, how I feel. I believe in a victor mindset. I believe you kill what you eat. You get to eat what you kill. I believe in going out there and waging an economic war. And many of y'all get that. And I appreciate that because many of you are on my side. You think like me. You're becoming indoctrinated. You understand. But there's a few people who are occupying an incongruent duality. Once again, that's an incongruent duality. You trying to make money, but you keep thinking like a slave. Just to be very clear, I had a few people who, you know, who wanted to go all in on the racial wealth gap. Newsflash, white people are never, ever going to give a bunch of black people a bunch of money. It ain't going to never happen. It ain't going to never happen. So it is foolish to spend your time thinking about that when we're in the epicenter of technology right now. One of the greatest technological advances in history where anybody with a cell phone can make money online. That's all it takes. You don't even need a full computer. You know, computer, laptop helps. Oh, uh, talking about the chick, I'm going to bring this up again. This chick is 19 to 20 years old, making more money per month than most people make, most of America makes per year. The internet. Let me get into it. With the ADOS and the reparations argument. I think it is a nothing argument. And a nothing argument to me is something that you're putting a great deal of thought, time, energy, and effort into, and there are no yields. There are no gains at the end of the tunnel. And these individuals who wanted to talk about this, both said they had multiple streams of income and they were making big money. Let's talk about Glendon Cameron, who was brought up by a single mother at times in abject poverty. I have gone through the transition of making money, of coming from nothing. Money changes everything. Money changes everything. And I believe both of these individuals are lying. I got all this education. I'm making all this money. You don't think like a person making money. Not by these weak slack mouth answers you were giving me. Because first of all, the winner's mindset is you're not going to focus your precious mental energy on things you can't change. I've said it on this channel before. The only rights that you have are the ones you can enforce. Just because a cop should not shoot a citizen, at that moment, that cop is judge, jury, and executioner on you. And you need to govern yourself accordingly. Shut up. That's all you have to do. I'm 52 years old. I've been pulled over by cops. This is the procedure. Do you know why I'm going to stop you? I don't don't understand. Well, let me see your license and registration. 
have it there. I don't say anything. I don't even have a conversation with these cops. Never have I felt that one of these cops was going to pull a gun on me. It, it's real simple. Shut up. That's all you have to do. Just shut up. Give the cop what he asked for. Because at that moment in time, he has a gun. And more importantly than the gun, he has the power of the state behind him. This is why, you know, resisting arrest, a cop says, put your hands behind your back, and you do all that. That's resisting arrest. And you got people who want to bemoan the fact that they're in this situation because they were raised by a single parent, by a mother, and this they seen how their mother deal with conflict. So they deal with conflict the same way by running their damn mouth. Once again, 52 years old, been stopped by cops, never had a problem. License and registration. Here you go. One time, unbeknownst to me, I was driving on a suspended license. This was when I was doing my Uber research. And the cop pulled me over and like, Mr. Cameron, you know your license is suspended? And I looked stunned because I was shocked. I said, no, no. that, that. I said, go back and check that. That can't be right. I was driving for Uber and we did all kinds of background checks. Officer, white female, went back to her car and she says, you know, this is strange. Your license has been renewed and this is from a suspension from 1989. I paid that ticket. She said, well, I'm not going to arrest you. I'm not going to impound your car. This is clearly a mistake. I'm just going to give you a ticket and you go down court and you get it cleared up. And that's what I did. Because I knew how to act because I wasn't running my mouth like some disenchanted woman. I could have been bowdy, bowdy, rowdy, rowdy, you know, all rowdy. Oh, why are you pulling me over? Because is it because I'm a black man? No, it's because I was driving a fancy new car with no tags on it. I knew exactly why she pulled me over. That's why I kept my insurance and registration in the visor, because I expected it. Expected it. But you've got many black people who are on this tip of I must express myself even though I'm wrong. Let's see. Oh, I'm about to explain, Jeremy. What's up, Johnny Walden? That's right, Ben. Here at the Money, Income, and Profit channel, people don't subscribe to the victim mentality. Josh Barr, you don't hunt, you don't eat. That's right. Kenny, Kenny, it's all ears. Wait till my reparation check come. Nah, bro, we build our own wealth here. Survive or thrive, the choice is yours. Mark Scott, this would be thought-provoking. Always winning. I'm on board with you, Glenn, and I'm grateful for the knowledge you share. I believe in the hustle mentality. Thank you. Been the, been the bartender receipts. Always winning. Money does change everything. This is why I don't believe those individuals when they say they're making money. They can't be making money because the way they think. Money does change everything, the way you talk, the way you walk. Anthony Johnson, so I'm on my third language, coding, wise, self-taught. I was thinking about a financial blog. I recall you saying the video is, is more the wave. Maybe I build my own site and my own videos. I also believe people, a lot of people say we never see a black president. Anything's possible. On this Google AdWords thing. Going to free coffee maker off Craigslist while catching the live stream. All right. Ganja, once again, like I said, what's up, Derek Cooper? I like to make a little bit extra cash. Because th this is the thing with the hoteps. And what they don't understand. I never went to African American. And it was a conscious decision because I'm black. I have, you know, 
my ancestors may have come from Africa, but my mom, my grandfather, grand, they, they, they didn't come from Africa. I'm an American. And this is one of the things when you get into these identity politics, you start to put the identity first. I often talked about when I was in sales, I let the black stuff go. Whenever something did not go my way, I asked myself, where did I screw up? That was the first process. I didn't get caught up in that. Well, you know, like I could have easily went ahead with the thing. Um, where there was, uh, I got fired from Powertel, Voice Stream, Metro, you know, uh, mobile, uh, T-Mobile. I could have easily went, but oh, the person they kept was black. So it wasn't a black thing, but I could have got all up in my feelings. Like, well, they let me go because I'm black. I'm African-American. I never got up into that. And this is something that has helped me mostly in business. When I, when I dealt with racism, I checked it. You know, the racism I dealt with was ad, ad, overt in my face. It was undeniable. And I checked it from a position of power in a position of I could do something about it. Oh, this reminds me of your video calling out the socialist contingency of YouTube. It's it's time. I have to do one of these because this one joker wanted to go back and forth all day and he said he was making money. See. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain what happens to you when you make money. While some folks discuss kingdom and queendom, other folks are building kingdoms around them. Results are the ultimate identity marker. Absolutely. See, I used to think like a whole tap. Long time ago, do the mop raising. And then when I had that stink, that transformation in that boarding house, I had to confront a lot of the things I used to think about that were not making making my life better. I had to get rid of these things. And one of the things that I, I had to realize was there's no one coming to save you. I remember when I was a kid, there was these bullies messing with me. And there was this guy, and you know, he's a bigger guy. He could actually say something. He said nothing. And I learned that lesson that no one's coming to save you. You can hold up hope. You can pray about it. You can think about it. But no one's coming to save you. Nobody. The reality is you need to pull out thread and needle and sew up your own cape and become your own Superman or Supergirl. Because once again, the only rights you have are the ones that you can enforce. Like with my child support thing. I had the ability to impact that outcome because I knew how the law worked from being in court. So I had the ability to enforce my right to enforce and make sure that, you know, because she dishonored the contract. I'm like, I'm out. If you ain't going to do what you need to do, why do you expect me to be honorable to someone who's dishonorable? That makes no sense. In the bartender, I'm not from Africa. I was born in Queen. Engineer cannabis, Robert L. Smith said, be an expert and learn the skill will and push you to success. Well, it is powerful because if you look at old black culture, we're going to talk about the uh, Barry White, the Luther Van Dross, when men sung songs of admiration and beauty about women where it was considered a good thing to get married it was considered a good thing to have children it was considered to go out and breed and raise a family and get a piece of the american dream that black culture i miss i love that black culture black folks were had dignity they were respectful they put on clothes when they went out black folks were a whole nother animal compared to this BS we have today. We're doing it for the culture. 
We're doing it for the weed. We're doing it for the hip hop. We're doing it for the ghetto culture. Charlotte Thomas, there's more to remembering your ancestors. They help in more ways than you know about, including with personal wealth. There's a reason white people want us to forget this. I'm not saying forget where you came from. I'm saying don't live in the past. Be very, really clear. Because I will agree with you this. I've heard many white people say that everything in history that has been an innovation has been invented by white people. I, every time I hear that, I obviously know that's true. The Great Pyramids are older than Britain, London. They use math. They use technology that these Britons never have ever had been able to replicate to build those pyramids. So that's one great technological advancement that white people had nothing to do with because this was in the desert and those people were brown. Gunpowder was invented in China. They didn't have anything to do with those, but I call them the great covethers that we will covet something like Elvis stole music from black folks, literally stole songs from black folks. So white people historically have been the great thieves of everything. They put their name on stuff and say, we did it in this entitlement mindset. Jomo, I'm glad you came on. I was about to check League of Zoom to finally set my LLC. I'm in, in Alabama. I would advise you to do it yourself, Joe M. JC Ham, self-provision, law of the land, old cliche still applied. Quentin, I can tell these people are serious because, see, when I start talking about economics, you can do it, you can make, you can compete. I start challenging sacred cows. There are still many black folks who don't think that if you are a black owner of a business that white people do business with you. There are many black folks who still think like that. They still think like that. They still have these antiquated thoughts. Uh, there are there are a group of white, black people that think interracial dating is the devil. Like the combination of a white male, of a white female and a black male. It's 2019. You could put that up and you're going to get all types of heat and traction because people are still very sensitive about that. Stack the flipper. People used to say more money, more problem. Once I got more money, they became my problem. See, this, this is the thing that happens when you get money. Once again, I grew up poor. I remember the first time I felt economically free. This was in East Point. This was the JDA deal. I had about $50,000 in the bank and no debt. My car was paid for. I had money to blow. I always had money. My ex didn't know how much I was making. You know, I paid, you know, my child support, my, my child support remained the same. I was like, this feels different. I mean, you know, you, you know what it feels like to have $50,000 in the bank, all your bills paid and you got more money coming in. Richard Mayfield, as long as my customer has green and plastic, we are good. Opinions are like assholes. Gunja, my father's side of the family threatened me, killed me, disowned me if I marry a non-black woman. I don't speak to them much, so it wouldn't be, it wouldn't matter. Oh no, this is this is this, this is what this is part of Hotep Nation. Like every time you see a young black man that gets jammed up dealing with a white girl, it comes out. I mean, I see the comments on Facebook. People be going hard. Need to leave Becky alone. Need to leave those snow bunnies alone. Get you a good black woman. You know, my first girlfriend in life was a white girl named Becky Gross. Becky. Her real name was Becky. You know why she liked me? Because I was smart. That's why she liked me. We used to do homework together. So I got that validation signal from a white woman very early that I appreciate you 
because you're intelligent. I've been getting those signals most of my life from non-black women. There are a few, the new black woman who appreciates intelligence. The new black woman, I'll probably do it on the men's channel. She ain't for all this foolishness. She ain't for this whole tep stuff. She's not for um, the ghetto culture. She ain't for this. She's the new black woman. She's fit. She's in shape. She works out. She has natural hair. The new black woman is coming online harder and harder every day. And many brothers ain't ready for her because she don't have that ghetto in her. She don't have that hood culture. She ain't trying to do it for the culture. J, J98. You should get on Google. That's where you learn about taxes. I'm going to do it for the weed. Deep thought, 50K, no debt, sound beautiful as a motherfucker. When keeping it real goes wrong. I used to love those things about Chris Rock. We had Shalanda. Shalanda went off on her friend. She didn't realize her friend was going to call the police. When keeping it real goes wrong. One of the things that when you get money, it changes your reality. This is why this one guy's like, I make $70,000. I have a six-figure net worth. i like, you ain't making enough money because you still wed it to, well, you know, let's, let's go ahead and get into talking about something you can't personally change. It is historic that barbaric, atrocious acts were done to black people. This is history. They were supposed to get 40 acres in a mule. They didn't get it. They got cheated. We know this. Going on and talking about this is like going to the beach and go, there's sand on the beach. Look, there's some sand. It changes nothing having this conversation. It is a different conversation versus having respect for where you came from. You got people in 2019 who are living in 1800s. 1900s, 1700s, 1600s. You got black folks who's like, you know, racism hasn't improved. Racism has drastically improved. We still got a lot of work to do. I got a post on Money Income Profit Facebook page that I put up, you know, that most businesses owned by white people and that needs to change. Knowing me, more black people need to start own, owning businesses. That's what I meant. The white dudes, because it, it became a promoted post, they losing their minds. It's like, how dare you even say that? That's the way it's supposed to be, boy. Always winning. There's a reason that this type of music trap is promoted. Kenny Lattimore had a slam and CD. However, the kind of music is no longer promoted. I'm going, I'm going to flow the theory. Let's say in the mid 90s, because this is when the change happened, because I was on the scene. When you started to see trap music, hood music, ghetto music, uh, gang music replace traditional R&B. You started to see that the record companies did not push this. Uh, I will agree with the hoteps that this narrative was pushed. But see, once again. Just like uh, I forget the senator from North Carolina who said, if we don't solve this single parent problem in the black community, it will filter to our community. I think his name was Jesse Hems. He actually said this and he was a segregationist and racist. He said, no, we need to fix this problem because it's going to filter into our community. And no one talks about single mothers no more because. 42% of the kids in America are born out of wedlock. So what's the largest block of women having kids in America? White women. So you can't talk about them. You can't talk about those single mothers without talking about your own, your own women now. So this is why you never hear this stuff anymore. Daniel DeVarm Chart, my parents disowned me and my daughter because I went white. 
once again, this, this is the type of silly stuff I'm talking about. Because, you know, going back to what I was saying, atrocious things happen to black people. Uh, there was many slave ships. Many of the slaves didn't survive. They were killed and dumped out in the middle of the sea like nothing. Bad things happened. Atrocious things happened. Wrongs were done. And you think about it, it's heartbreaking. But you can't live in the past. And this is what many of these whole tips do. They live in the past. And also, let's talk about reparations. How would they how would we decide who gets reparations? Because all of the mixed breeding, everybody in America is a mutt. This is why you have all of these white girls with sister asses because they got some brother or sister up in the family tree. How are we going to decide who gets what? See, when you start getting into the meat of it, it's, it gets very, you know, deep. Exactly. Just because someone gives you a crack doesn't mean you have to smoke it. The best thing I did this year was stop the excuses to just focus on solutions. That last thing, the best thing I did this year was stopping the excuses and just focus on solutions. I made that choice many years ago. Quinn, I'm ready for the new black girl. The current one think I'm lame and they assume only, only have sex with white women. If they want to go fight racism, help out the blacks in Brazil. They're not the only type of people going to Brazil are brothers to get with Brazilian women. This is not a culturally united at war. Because once again, you know, he, he kept going back and forth with me. Because see, the thing is, I have gone through the transformation of going from broke to making a lot of money. He don't smell like it. He don't talk like it. He don't walk like it. He still is a wage jockey. And once again, you know, people talk about six figures. I'm talking about six figures, cash, money. What you talking about? Six figures and stocks and bonds and your 401k and, and your insurance policy. Well, th this is the thing. Reparations are never going to happen. Because it's such a huge problem. The first black people who should have got their 40 acres and a mule got screwed over. And that's where the problem began. You're not going to be able to fix that problem because, you know, there's all these things about, you know, reparations. What's up, Paul? Thanks for the five dollars. Um, how do you give this money out? Because, see, like I said, I used to have a lot of hotep in me. And the more that I got into business and the more that I took personal ownership for making mistakes, I remember. There was this one deal and it was a white woman and she was acting all kinds of funny. And in my mind, I wanted to go to the reason that this deal is going south is because I'm black. I had to fight with myself. I was like, no, that ain't it. You know, that's it. You know, that's it. I had to go home and fight with myself. And part of my, um, the process was I sent this woman an email and I, I actually put a little personality on it. I was like, hey, you know, uh, thanks for the opportunity to present to sell these products to you. Sorry it didn't work out. If you would be so kind to tell me what I did wrong to help me with future sales. And she answered like five minutes. She said, it wasn't you. My boss has someone he wanted to get furniture. And she said, one of the reasons, and I, I need to apologize to you, the way that I acted was he put me in this intractable situation where I had to do all this stuff when he had already picked who he was going to buy the furniture from. So this is why she was acting all crazy. And if I had allowed my weak inner self to say it was racism, I never would have wrote that email. And I never would have tapped that ass because, uh, you know, as we were emailing, I was just like, hey, you know, 
let's go out. And she said, that's a great idea. And this was someone who was giving me static, but because I got out of the black thing and started to go on the people thing, I was able to navigate those waters. One of the greatest things you can do if you're a black business owner is forget that you're black and operate on results and service. You know, this is not the day of A.G. Gaston where you couldn't, you know, black people couldn't stay at hotels. We had to have our own hotels. I hate to say this, but I feel like if most black, black people got representations, they would give them right back to white. Absolutely. If they got a check. Absolutely. See, I'm here. I'm a one man army trying to get as many black folks to start businesses as possible. Christian, uh, Dave did a, a, a skit on that. Deep thought. I found out we pay off uh, 1.4 billion debt with half our new ports. Dang. Antonio Williams, white people respect intelligence. What's up, Ty Love? I'm going to tell you something. This is what I discovered from business. White people can be racist as hell, but if there's economic benefit, they will put their racism to the side and work with you. When I was in business environments, Marilyn, Marilyn sent me her resume. Marilyn gave me all kinds of hard ways to go when I started the business environments. But she saw that I got results, that I was a producer, that I shook that money tree. This woman was willing to put aside her racism to work in a submissive position for my black self. I saw it on the storage auction trail. Bobby, hey, man, you don't bid against me. I won't bid against you. I brought him to his knees because I used to dig into his butt. Oh, bidding on these units? Let's take it to the moon. Let's go. 500, 600, 700, 800. Wouldn't even blink because I learned that's what it took to get respect. The, the ability, the fearlessness to spend money, to run them up, to wreck their pockets. That's what I learned. Bob Marley was biracial. Like all this yin yang stuff about Robert F. Smith because he has a white wife. See, this is one of the things. I, I remember watching this girl Martin Bionna today, people are racist, not money, credit, and business opportunities. Absolutely. I mean, this, this is one of the things because it, through my personal journey, I can impart a lot of wisdom to people. I learned out there in the heat of economic battle that racist white people will bend if you got the economics. And that's why I've been on this message. Get your economics together. Don't march. Don't protest. Get your money back together. Get your money together. Uncle G, that's what I respect about you. You do for more for black people than the pro-black cat on YouTube. All they talk about is give me. Well, white people should do some reparations. They should, they should be kinder. I don't care if they're kind to me. Due to my achievements, my economics, they be nice to me. Richard Miffy, exactly. When I fly first class and look up the look the part, white guys I see on the money tip give up the game all day long. 
you know, unless you're sitting by somebody who got in first class on points, then they really, you know, I was sitting next to this nurse and I was like, oh, like she said, yeah, I was like, man, those points must be good. She said, how did you know? I was like, I got up here by points too. She said, man, we had a nice little conversation. What's up, Lamo? And tell me, William, he, I, I actually put that on someone's Facebook post and they didn't like it. The golden rule, do unto others. No, no, no. The golden rule is he who has the gold makes the rules. Always winning. I digress. When the U.S. has paid other groups reparation recently, they haven't paid black people because it's the right thing. We set global trend. Look, you think that this country that elected Donald Trump is getting ready to pay some reparations. You're delusional. Let's examine why Donald Trump run. White people are feeling oppressed. Like on this post on my Facebook page, uh, Money, Profit, and Income, check it out. They don't like the audacity that I, as a black man, would say, well, most of the businesses in America are owned by white men, and that this needs to change. They've been coming at me all kinds of way because he's talking so reckless. I don't care if the United States has paid other groups reparations. First of all, these groups were not as large as the contingency of black people. That's some like, all right, we got to pay 200 people. We got to pay 300 people. We got to give them a little sum. Oh, we got to give 14% of the population a lot of money. It ain't going to happen. It should have happened. 40 acres and the mule to those free slaves. It should, but it didn't. And all this talk about making it happen is a waste of time because in the same time that you're talking about this, you can use that energy to start a business and get your own money up. Uh, Erica, we don't have enough lawyers or businessmen to fight versus the Jewish people who got the money in 2015 from the Just Act Japanese German. Well, Jews, Jews have been playing this game for 2,000 years. Black folks have been playing this game for 500 years. See, this is one of the things like, you know, I, I'm glad you brought up Jewish people. I had a Jewish roommate in the military and we used to talk about this. Jewish people have been oppressed for 2000 years. This is why they act the way that they do. This is why they get the money. This is why they dominate industries, because they've learned that if we ain't running stuff, we're going to have people who are going to try to take us out. Black folks need to adopt that more aggressive personality. This is the personality like. Visit a Jewish synagogue, get to know some Jews and start talking about th their culture. You know, they ain't waiting on it. Gunja, I wouldn't be surprised if white people will campaign for socialism if they fail to compete in the future. Uh, the monthly stipend, the, you know, set of, they, they already working on it. Robbie Rob, yeah, I think black people got reparations 2019, 2020. They think white men would go crazy. Trump would be impeached. Absolutely. Donald Trump and no reparations probably wouldn't happen. Doesn't mean people should fight for it. Well, let's look at the opportunity cost of fighting for something that you're not going to get. That same energy could have gone into building businesses to raise the income. I, I, I just think it's a foolish fight. It ain't going to happen. Stack the flipper reparations of the black community now will look like tax time on steroids. Blinding Buddha. Yes, we should learn from the Jewish people. Ben Blitz, I love Jewish people and Spanish couple. The men are very stream. What do you mean? Charlotte, if they gave reposition in the form of business grants where the only criteria was to show a birth certificate and ID, there probably wouldn't even be a big showing. I, I would agree with you that because people don't want to do that. 
Donald Johnson, why can't you do both? If you have it in your mind that people have your money, they owe you something, you're not going to work as hard as you could because you feel that at the end of the day, they should pay up. Hey, just start a business. Oh, Stern. Okay. I mean, once again, you know, to the hope tips out there, you should take that energy and that anger and that vigor and invest it into personal development and the betterment of your family. When they gave black farmers and descendants of black farmers 50,000 in most southern areas, most bought Cadillacs and shopping. They did the whole they did a whole documentary on it. Waverly like Wayne, a lot of these you're dealing with a new person. They don't know about business. Donald Trump, Donald Johnson. So you can't chase economic freedom and political freedom. Uh, this reparations are not about political freedom. They're about economics. So, you know, you should check your verbiage. Fighting for reparations is not politics. It's not political freedom. It's trying to get some money because you black. That's not political freedom. Quinn Jackson, to me, it seems like Hoteps and other black activists are saying these things to antagonize and provoke responses out of people. I'm black in South Carolina, and racism has never stopped me. Christian Anderson, get your skills up. It was for the racist loan practice in the 1980s that won the lawsuit, but at what cost? Money is political freedom. Um, political power can be purchased by money, but it doesn't originate with money. It originates with ideals. Hey, Jeremy, if you want to ask me a question, do it on live stream. Because, like, once again, I don't answer emails for questions. People want to ask me, like, a question, email me. If you got a question, the time to ask is now. Uh, Daniel, I heard of another channel, the black dollar accounts for more than 40% of the money spent in this country. I want you to think about this. 14% of the country with a large poor contingency is spending 40% of the money in the country. I really want you to really think about that. Cause I heard like, take Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan was supported by the black community and all these kids. Michael Jordan was supported by the white community and those white kids buying those Jordans. Hype beast. Google hype beast. A lot of these rappers were supported by white kids. Uh, that 40% of money spent in this country is BS. They ain't enough of us to spend that kind of money. No one ever said what reparations look like. It could come in the forms of education. Mark Scott, I'm helping the poor by not remaining poor. Amen. Uh, Jeremy, how do you start your own business? This is what you do. You start watching this channel. You go back a few years and just watch videos. See, I put out this information. There's like 2,500 videos on this channel. You just got to get into it and start watching it. What Waverly Light Wayne? Speaking about the whole tips, did you hear about Umar Johnson on the recent podcast accidentally exposed his real living conditions as allegedly as a hoarder? I I don't get into the whole tip community. Pride and ego 
ball or block a lot of the black folks. Like, you know, the whole thing with Umar. I will say that integration of black people into American mainstream destroyed a lot of black businesses. This is a historical fact. But we here now. We ain't going back. Lewis Sutton, go to Canada, Lamar's concert, 97% white people. They know more songs than me. Your network is your net worth. Go back to 2015, 2017. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm giving you references. You know, uh, Blonde and Boogles talking about Vanessa Lou. This is someone eight months ago who didn't have an online business. She's killing it. Because one of the things is, you know, with reparations, it's a very tricky subject because as you start to go down the rabbit hole, what would reparations look like? Who would be eligible for, for reparations? The devil's in the details. And like someone put up there, Erica and someone else said that if it was in the form of a check, most of the black folks, because they don't have financial literacy, would spend the money and they wouldn't hold on to it. It'd be just like tax season. People would be out here um, balling out of control, buying Cadillacs, Lexuses. Because here's another thing that happens through the transformation of going from a poor person to a person with money. There's this period of your life that I call the thirst trap. You got all of these wants. And see, I've, I've been in a certain situation where I've been able to get all that out of my system. You know, if, some, if I won a lottery uh, tomorrow, if I played, you know, I don't play, so it's hard to win if you don't play. But if I won, like, five million dollars i probably would take the whole five million and buy rental property i wouldn't because i've already do the vacations i already have a nice lifestyle so there isn't that thirst and that thirst trap will kill a lot of people if reparations were given in the form of a check For anybody looking for you know education on how to start a business, watch this channel. If you don't know what you need to do, start a service business. Izzy, I love it. You got the deal, but you she was nice because the thing is, when I was presenting the furniture to her because she was acting so stank, I didn't get my flirt on because she was cute and you know, after, you know, she told me that, you know, they were going to go to this other company. I was like, thank you for your time and everything. And I went home and I wanted to like, man, it was racist. They were racist. I, I just was. And then I, I had to fight with my inner self. And that's like, OK, what we're going to do, we're going to write this woman an email. And we're going to figure out where we went wrong. And she just went ahead and gave up the ghost and said her boss was saying, we're going with this, but we need to get these bids. Common practice, common practice. As a salesperson, you got to figure out who the decision maker is and get to them as quick as possible, or you can be caught up in one of these games. A hey, rush, they were probably exclude felons for reparations. Who knows, man? Who knows? And once again, I have seen the videos where, you know, let's just go ahead and give you a little legal knowledge. If a cop tells you to do something and you don't do it, that's resisting arrest. So they tell you to turn around, put your hands behind your back and you like doing all this and all this other stuff. You are setting the stage where you could be killed because you're not complying and you're being hostile. This is why these cops don't get convicted by these juries because they start because they they have the power of the state behind them. That cop isn't just Johnny Okie Doki cop. That badge says I have the power invested in me by the state, by the county of such and such. And that's a lot of power. And they're not going to put a cop in jail for 
killing someone unless it's really egregious, you know, and times have changed. Like uh, this chick who killed this guy in this apartment. She going to get, she going to vote. She going to, she going to burn a uh, cop who killed Dallas man. Uh, I, I'm trying to figure out. All right, her her trial is start is set to start in a few days. She's gonna fry. She's gonna fry. Josh Barr, what about the guy who gave up three grand for one night with a woman? You know how I feel about that. That's crazy. They fear for their life. Yeah, because uh, she's going to fry, man. She's going to fry. And this is something that uh, people don't seem to understand. Hold on, let me send this. Uh, I don't think she's going to walk. Black folks don't want to deal with their ninjas. They are a bigger threat than whites. That is an issue. And this is something Well, I talk about bad black culture. If you look at the culture that I grew up with, it was loving, it was supportive. Black strangers would look out for you. And this is something that has changed. I don't know if any of y'all remember the bad kids. The bad kids knew they were bad. And they would tell you, it's like, man, you got a future. You don't, you don't need to be doing this. They would kick you out of their activities. Because the bad kids knew that they were a lost cause and they didn't want you to become lost. Now they like, Come on, player. Come on, pull up a chair. Let's deal you into this BS. That was the black culture that I grew up with. Where old people would support school projects. It was just a beautiful thing. That's gone. I call this the Cardi B culture. The offset culture. The future culture. I don't think she's going to walk Donald Johnson. Because she actually went into, she, she made a mistake. She went to the wrong apartment. Uh, National Flip League. What are you trying to say? Oh, I tried to figure that out. Now, there are some people who have this F the police mindset. Now, this is a part of poor culture. Poor people are more likely to be harassed by cops or know people who've had bad exchanges with cops. This is a byproduct of being poor. When I was in high school, one of my friends, his father was the police chief, Mr. Richardson. He knew me. I knew him. This is something that has gone because in a lot of these small towns, the cops know who you are. You grow up with them. Black, white. But, you know, we have people. Once again, this is part of the poor or bad black culture. Like F the police. They ain't nothing they can do. And this is something that a lot of black folks don't want to see because um, someone said Hunt for Jones. How many of these guys who got jammed up by the cops were doing something illegal? We can't talk about that. That's blaming the victim. Well, if you weren't doing something illegal other than the brother that was shot in his car because he let the cop know they had a gun and you know, I had this conversation. I have a concealed carry permit in the state of Georgia. It's not required that if you're at a traffic stop for you to inform the cop that you have a gun. 
I have never opened up my mouth and say, hey, Mr. Officer, I got a gun in here. What's the point? If I'm not trying to pull this gun on this cop, why does he need to know? I never, I've always had a gun on me. Never brought it up. Never say, hey, you know, I got a gun on me. You know, this is what happens. This has never been one of the things that I would ever bring up to a cop. I got a concealed carry permit. Been strapped for many years. Don't bring it up. And I will advise you if you are a concealed you know, permit carrying gun person, you can pull over the cops. I wouldn't even bring up I have a cop, a gun. Shut up, give them your license and registration, take your ticket, and drive on. But I've seen these videos where folks want to get into it with the cops. Martin, I'm beginning to see that the black hip-hop culture is becoming almost deadly, in my opinion, spiritually and financially. Because if you ain't with them, you against them. They will turn, they will turn on you. I find dirty cops like to patrol criminals like, you know, crime ridden neighborhoods. Criminals like criminals, man. Donald Johnson or a byproduct of living by experiences. Once again, if you're going to have bad experiences with the cops on a consistent basis, it's because you're poor. Like in this neighborhood, let me tell you how they got it set up. Uh, they sent us a, a thing where everybody that lives in the neighborhood, you have to send in your, your vehicle you drive because they got cameras up here on the, um, the poles that go straight to the police station. So they will know if you're a vehicle that belongs in this neighborhood or not. It's very rare that I see a cop. In this part of the neighborhood, once again, wealth has its privileges. They don't mess with you because they don't know who they pulling over. They could be pulling over a judge. They could be pulling over a CEO of a multi. They, they don't know who they pulling over. So everybody gets a lot of respect. Steve Jameson, they used to be the community police. Now it's more of an occupying force. Uh, this would be poor neighborhoods. Once again, this is why I did this video. I will never live in the hood. This is why I say get your economics up so you can live where you live. In better neighborhoods, you just don't have this problem. Well, I haven't had this problem. What's up, 285 Property? When dealing with cops, the number one rule, stay alive and fight it in court. There, there you go. David 84, so sick of people blaming a white man for all black people's problems. I'm not racist at all, but I can tell a racist from a mile away and more blacks are racist like your videos, man. <laughs> well, this is one of the things. Like, many black people feel that they can say disrespectful and crazy stuff like the term cracker. They can use this language, but they don't feel that they're being discriminatory because, you know, this is the thing. Black folks can't be racist, but you know, black folks can sure show a lot of racist tendencies for someone that's not to be racist. Because once again, uh, I don't go around calling white folks crackers. I don't have this embedded hate of white people. I just don't. And some black people do. Uh, Gene, yeah, the standards and family values among most blacks and I get passed along to the next gen. No. It doesn't happen. Dang, blinding Buddha. In Atlanta, the police cars have alarms yet. Where I live in Florida, they don't even use their sirens. They just pull up quietly. The positive experiences of living in a nice neighborhood. Who 
285 property, you're a former cop. Once again, uh, I don't have this F the police mindset. I actually called the police during the domestic dispute, and the cops believed me, a six foot one at the time, 285 pound black man. Maybe 300 pounds. They believe me over her. Uh, National Flip League TV. I guarantee I, I would challenge you to do a Google shirt, a Google search of all of the well to do neighborhoods that have had shootings. Uh, my experience has been contrary to what you said. Boss, every time Uncle G try to teach black people, there's someone white labeling him a racist. Well, that's what's happening on my Facebook page. JCM, yes, I was stopped by a cop driving in a nice affluent neighborhood. Initially, I was offended, then understood. Dead cops wanted to know who's living in the community. Like, once again, um, I've been living in nice neighborhoods for 15 years. My interactions with the police have been minimum. Like I I'm here to tell you, you just, they don't, you just don't see them like you do in high crime neighborhoods. Uh, Louis DeSella, I used to live in the South Bronx New Year over 30 years ago. Now I live in the suburbs and can count my name. Interactions with cops on one hand. Who said anything about it? it wasn't okay to have black pride? Once again, the, the here's the template. In Dallas, there's no way around it. Million dollar condos and gated neighborhoods across the street from government assisted places. That's something I hate. I don't, you know, call me an elitist. I don't want to live around folks who don't make no money. Every one of the things about over where I live, there is no low income housing. As a young infantry cop, I used to say F the police over the loudspeaker and the cruiser. I mean, Johnny Walker, I'm a commercial driver. I had to deal with the police all the time. No bad experiences. Izzy, I got stopped by a plain claw uh, cop car, and the cop guy was asking me, showing the can. I was drinking a can of Arizona soda a block away from home. He then left. This is New York City. Oh, one of the things that happens with um, people in understanding. It, you know, let's let's talk about the money. All right. Another transformation. When I started getting money to live where I wanted to live versus what I could afford, that's a very different dynamic. When you have this situation of you can live wherever you want to, not where your pockets dictate, you start to experience nicer treatment all the way around. From the real estate agents to you know leasing agents, it's a big thing. All points. That's how you can have a mansion cheaper in Dallas than most places because it's cross right across the street from low-income housing. I, here's my thoughts on this because you know I hear the cry for subsidized housing, low-income housing. I'm out here killing dragons to make the money that I make. I don't want to live with somebody who ain't killing dragons. That's just natural. Uh, uh, 
on Joe Mo, that's that sole proprietor stuff. Once again, we don't do that here. We start businesses the correct way. I mean, once again, as a person who has climbed up the ladder, I don't want to be living next to someone who hasn't done that. And, you know, I, I see the plight like, you know, right here, Roswell Road is not too far away. And what they have done systematically since I've been living in this neighborhood have eradicated the low income housing. They've uh, where this new shopping center up here on Roswell Road is. It used to be low income housing. They tore that stuff down. This is what's going on. Uh, people are not trying to live with folks who are in these situations. I mean, I, I, I'm, I don't want to live in a poor neighborhood. And I'm going to be so elitist to say this, that during my Craigslist protocol days, that if a girl lived on a certain side of town, I wouldn't mess with her because I'm like, you know what's over there. You live over there. You chose to live over there. That says a lot about you. Southside Forest Park wouldn't mess with them. Because I didn't feel comfortable driving my car over there. Just wouldn't mess with them. National Flip. League, you just mentioned Florida. You know, Florida is a low income state. You can get a house for 120K in Florida with a pool. Most of the country where there are nice areas, affluent areas, don't have shootings. You know, I was in Miami recently and the culture is deep down there. You just don't have shootings in nice neighborhoods categorically. You just don't. And once again, this is some hood stuff like, well, it happened in the hood. It must happen over there because they ain't no better than we are. The lies that poor people tell themselves. I've lived in this neighborhood 12, 14 years. Not one shooting. There's been some car wrecks. There's been some break-ins. Not one shooting. You think there's shootings up in Beverly Hills? They're not. Quentin Jackson, how do you deal with the jealousy and animosity from the socialists of other haters? You just deal with it. They're working on Roswell Road, the guy on the internet. Wicked wonder kid conundrum. Black Americans have the ability to be prejudiced, bigotous, or biased, but not racist. Black America, see, this is once the thing. Let's let's call a spade a spade. So, black Americans experiencing bad behavior and racial behavior to non-black folks is cool. That's what you're saying. This is this is the argument. Well, because I can't be racist, I can say cracker and all these other offensive things, and you shouldn't be mad. Those are stupid black folks' tricks. Black folks can be racist. They can be bigoted. They can be prejudiced. They can be racist and they can display racial attitudes and behavior. And I know of black folks who hate white people. That's some racist stuff for your ass. There's nothing wrong with gentrification. People take it up to personally. The same people who live in those neighborhoods could, did the same thing. They just weren't organized. Flow Master 8. Poor neighborhoods breed poor minds. It's a cycle. Absolutely. Good Lord. When you get a woman's phone number, call Domino's Pizza. If they don't live into the area, don't go. Hello, Florida is crazy. Where I live in Florida, where I live in Seminole, I've not heard of any shootings. Average income in Kimisi is 39. I live in Florida now, Jacksonville.
Oh man, Cascade Road has changed a lot. Uh, racism about control, not a feeling. Yeah, it depends on who's it coming from because upper class whites have convinced that um, poor whites are better than blacks. And this is one of the reasons that you see Make America Great, these people wearing these red Trump hats, is the realization of where they are in the food chain has become quite evident and they're not as high as they thought they were. This happened on YouTube a few years ago. There was this white beauty blogger. She's a pretty girl, making about 100K a year. She moved out of her parents' house. She went to the prom. You know when she went to the prom? She went to her brother. One of the big problems that people have is that when someone becomes a pure free agent, you do what you want because you want to do it. And she wanted to take her brother to the prom because she had her own economics. She had emancipated herself from her parents. She could do whatever she wants. So when you get people who are free agents and they start making decisions like this, society flips out because it's hard to control these people. Flow master, someone did an experiment where they take half the population of people in the hood and move them to a prominent neighborhood. The prominent neighborhood will turn into a third world country. Here's the thing, and this is from Earl Nightingale, and I remember listening to it. Poor people in poor neighborhoods have trash everywhere, and most of these folks are at home. One of the things that I used to see as a kid in my poor neighborhood that people had personal pride. These people were poor, but they kept their yards cut. There wasn't trash all over the place because these people had personal pride. So when you get to certain hoods, there ain't no pride. No one gives a damn. Trash everywhere. Lawn overgrown. And these folks at home because they don't have jobs. Personal pride. Thanks, Quentin Jackson, for the three dollars. So the Ku Klux Klan and race soldiers aren't see that this language you're using these keywords, the Ku Klux Klan and the race soldiers. Um, I'm 52 years old. I've been all over this country. I've driven all over this country. I've been stopped by cops in many states. I ain't dead because of some race soldier. See, you have this National Flip League NFL TV. You have this false narrative in your head that you can't be a free man because of these opposing forces that you personally have not experienced. But they out there like the X-Files. Once again, the winner's mindset is focusing on what you can achieve and what you can do. Most of the fears and worries of the hoteps never happen. There is not going to be a race war. We don't have a lot of warriors. White men are killing themselves and becoming addicted to opioids instead of fighting. They don't have it in them. That's why I'm like, lad, like there's this race war. He's a race soldier. Really? You know, when I got when I went and got my concealed carry permit and the cops were in the police station when they were taking it, they we had a nice little conversation. If he was a race soldier, he was doing a very bad job. Man, living in the hood may hurt your income. Oh, Louis the Seller, I used to be a speeder. I was a big time speeder. G Sam, yes, you got to think property value, and some people don't value their property. A lot of people don't value their property in the hood. See, we're not going to get into stupid black folks tricks like your exact definition of racism. 
See, this, these are arguments that don't put money in your pocket. And I don't participate in arguments that don't put money in my pocket. See, this is why the winner's mindset, why you got to stop thinking about things you cannot change. You got black folks spending hours and hours on podcasts defining racism and what racism is and how black folks can't be racism. But we can display all kinds of nasty attitudes, stank attitudes and racist behavior. But because we black and we can't be racist, that's cool. That is stupid. I have, you know, had friends who just did not like white people and they would get start acting funny whenever they got around white people. And I'm like, what's wrong with you? And it's like, you know, you got that cracker up in here. And what has he done to you? Nothing. But, you know, look at the historical accountability of what I'm like. Really? Really, 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 really. You're talking about all this stuff. People throwing trash out of cars. Donald Johnson, I worked hand in hand with Klan members and it reaches very deep. The Klan ain't some backwoods hillbillies anymore. Oh, uh, the Klan is it's like a snake with no teeth. Black people racist toward each other, black people for thinking different. Absolutely. Really, really. I live across a rental property and recently some ghetto people moved in there and within a few weeks the front door was broken off of the hinges. People don't care about their property. All right, so let, 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 let's go ahead and talk to National Flip League NFL TV. So how has these thoughts and the way that you think helped you make money in life? Answer me that. That all cops are racist. How has that helped you make money? See, at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. Can you make money with your thought process? Most hoteps, most people who are on this racist tip, race soldier tip which is something that was started by nasheed the former player you got black people walking around here afraid that some white person is going to do something bad to them and it ain't going to never happen but what is happening is real anxiety what is happening is personal crisis you got people walking around thinking bad things are going to happen to them and they're never going to happen. So National Flip League, NFL TV, tell me how have your thought process made you money? Morning Blue, wow, that's deep. Virtues of personal pride. Uh, solid gold, I would suggest you get um, 30 days to 2,500 and learning how to ask him for the money. Donald Johnson, you can be race conscious and very economically successful. I disagree because if you're so race conscious, that's going to interfere with you doing business with people because of the preconceived notions that you have. I firmly disagree. I'm racist. I love green, new Chris dollar bills and old dollar bills. That's funny. Thinking about race all of the time does not help your economics. Even race conscious is a buzz, buzzword they gave you. Too many people walk around with phrases and lingos they did not create. Like race soldier. I know that came from Tariq Nasheed. And once again, when I say a nice neighborhood, I'm talking about a neighborhood with mansions. 
I'm not talking about a nice working class neighborhood. I'm talking about, you know, you drive around and there, there's a mansion. There is, you know, gates. Don Johnson, my aunt learned that the hard way. Her black clients didn't want to pay her. Jim Rohn had a great saying, stand guard at the door of your mind. Because essentially, you know, one of the reasons I'm doing this is because we got a few hotel people, a few uh, who are around here who don't understand the message. Donald Johnson, I just... Donald Johnson, you just said you work with right races that will work with you. The money is right. I just said I won. That's winning. That's winning, Donald Johnson. And you change your mindset. You can join the winner's circle, too. I also said I beat them. None of this submissive, hand-wringing, Negro handkerchief stuff that you're talking about. I walked in like a man did economic battle in one so if you're gonna repeat me repeat the fact that i won and i beat them repeat that none of this handkerchief stuff bit <laughs> bt the creator i was race conscious then the reality hit me white folks pay me up front no problem Hundreds to thousands, but my own people take pay my own people in problem weeks later than pay. So Donald Johnson, this is one of the things that I've dealt with my whole life. Other black people minimizing my accomplishments because it doesn't fit the narrative that they're trying to feed me. I stood on my hind legs like a man and won. That's the lesson. Tia Jen, worry is interest paid on something you may never own. I like that. You got a whole bunch of black people out here worried about stuff that ain't going to never happen. There is not going to be a race war. We don't have any more warriors. Martin, the problem with most hood mentality people is they focus on what other hip hop artists, movie stars are getting into as far as drama and gossip. Absolutely. Donald Johnson, we can get money. I don't mean I will let you eat at my table. Once again, you know how people treated me is how I treated them. And when I ran across, and this is the thing, I've only ran across hardcore racism a few times in my life and I dealt with them appropriately. Uh, one of the big problems that black people have is when you say racist, you don't have classification of races. Most white people are benign racist, which means they have no power or sway over your life. All they can do is talk smack and say the N word. That's, that's their, the extent of their power. And that has a lot of black folks shook. Oh God, they're going to say, they're going to use the N word. Hmm. We were off with their heads. Ben, majority of my sales is flea market online are not on non black, white, Hispanic. I remember a story about a known racist coming back to you to hire them for work. Awesome story. Yeah, you know, people hear that stuff and like they focus on the racism, but they don't focus on the fact that I was in Charlie Sheen's verbiage, duh, winning. The only thing more expensive than education is ignorance. Mika Long, I like that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. They're so concerned about the race war, they forget about the economic war, which is Asian supremacy. You know, there's this big talk of white supremacy, white supremacy, white supremacy. Asian supremacy is sneaking up on your ass and you ain't even talking about it because you focused on the toothless white supremacy. 
White men are committing suicide in all time high numbers. White men are becoming addicted to opioid. White male life expectancy has dropped five years. Does that sound like supremacy? They losing. They're losing because they don't want to deal with the world as it's changing. They can't deal with it. Johnny Walton, he ain't worried about it at all. Save, invest, repeat. Being poor costs money. Grocery store in my neighborhood gave away free samples of products, beer and wine. Other side of town has scanner and police officer at the doors making sure you can't take none. Madol, Asian supremacy. All right, wicked kid economic conundrum. Because the, the thing is, you know, because the whole tips, you know, the message that I drive here is personal development and get your money up. This is America. America is a corporation for you to do well in America. You must act corporate. This is one of the things that will change your life. Behaving as a corporation. One of the things you got to do is remember where you are. United States of America became the economic superpower of the world because of the laws and things we have with the economy. Ben Bills, white people are afraid of going extinct. One of the things you got to understand. What you think about is what you become. And if you think that white people are out to get you you're going to see racism where it ain't even, it's, it's, it's just in your mind. Like my situation with this chick, I, I mean, she had a stank attitude. And one of the things that sales would teach you is how to relate to people. Because, you know, I, I kept having this fight with myself because one side of me wanted to say the behavior was racist. And she just wasn't very friendly. She had a little stank attitude. And, you know, she even apologized for that later. But if I had not, if I had submitted to my lower self on that racism tip, I never would have emailed her and I never would have got the results that I got. Hell, it was rich white people that rebooted China and India in the last 40 years to make more money. Remember Walmart went to China before anyone else? See, when you study history, you understand that things change. See, I want more of you to start winning. Don't be afraid to start a business because of what someone may say or do. Uh, Gary V had this skit that you're afraid to start your business because of what Chuck 76 is going to say. What a loser you are if you're going to let Chuck 76 keep you from starting a business. Who is Chuck 76? He's some no account person in his mama's basement playing around on the Internet. You better chase economic power. That makes a difference. You know, I, I tell you my journey and the vast changes that came also you know when you get money you get haters my personal family is some of the biggest haters i have because i was supposed to be the least successful and i'm the most successful person in the family narratives people get on these narratives of what you should be 
think I'm well, 1965 or something like that. Yeah. So one of the things you got to do is get this racist stuff out of your head because you've got to be able to network with people from various backgrounds to win. That's what's going to get you to the winner's circle. That's what's going to create for you the ability to own stuff. That's going to create for you the ability to be a baller. That's going to create for you the ability to change your finance, your family's economic future. That's right, Izzy. The guy on the internet, a lot of people who have certain opinions about white people don't know any here. You can go all the way across middle America and see working class and even poor neighborhoods filled with white people. Amen. This is another big issue. A lot of the hoteps, the hood black folks talk about white people all day long and don't know any. Don't know a one. I challenge you to watch the wonderful whites of West Virginia. It's a documentary about some poor ass white trailer trash. I mean, they are poor. I'm dealing with family issues due to my lifestyle choice. Why does family hate on you the most? Because family have a snapshot of who you used to be. And whenever you come out of that box, family has a hard time recalibrating who you are. My family had this image of me when I was in high school. You know, typically when you meet someone, and there's a, you know, like my family today doesn't even know who I am as a person. They have no clue because they haven't been in my life for about 15 years. Asian Indians don't have a problem working 10, 16 hours a day. No, they don't. Engineer life skill. Speak facts, Uncle G. My crew looks like a bunch of Skittles. We are killing on e-commerce. All right, the white redman. I mean, once again, you know, for the hoteps out here who want to talk about, you know, like I said, many horrible things were done to black people in slavery. How can you change that today by living in the past? I'm not saying don't remember it. I'm saying don't live in it. Don't dwell on it. Because, you know, I, the people who were going back and forth with me today, they don't, they've not made any real money. And see, real money is when you go looking for a house, you don't have a budget. You have a, you have a desire of what you want. That's real money. And when the family finds that you have money, they claim the money has changed you, even though you've remained the same type of person. Family expects you to never change. When you do, oh, you acting funny now. Flowmaster, would you ever reach? Uh, it's a lost cause. They're dead to me. See, I have this relationship, and I, I had this fight with some people I went to high school with. I believe that the family you choose, which is your friends, your network, can be better. Like, look, you know, don't get me misunderstood. If you have a beautiful, loving family, that's a that's a great thing. Everybody does not have that. And one of the problems I had is I would date these girls and they would have these wonderful families and they couldn't understand why I wasn't close with my family. And I was like, cause they get they gangster. They just don't appreciate me. And you know, it's hard when you have a very really good, loving, solid family to understand why other people don't. And you should sit down and be thanking your blessings. I got stuck in, in Virginia. A lady came out and asked me that I want to think, uh, drink a water into the truck. You know, Southern has for hospitality. I mean, you know, once again.
Go to Kentucky and tell them to stop hanging black people. Once again, a lot of these stories are exaggerated. And, you know, let's be clear. There's some bad things that happen to black folks. But you want to know what's really interesting? How often does this stuff happen to black folks with money? Message. 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 How often does this bad stuff happen to black folks with money? Message. Instead of wringing your hands, well, they're going to do something. Uh, they need to stop hanging black folks in Kentucky. Send me the links. This should be newsworthy. This should be in the news. Send me the links. Two eight five property. A lot of black folks have uh, a lot of folks have toxic family dynamics, and they need to sever all ties. Absolutely, because the because the thing is, you know, when my mother got sick, everyone wanted me to move home and take care of her again. Because the first time it happened, I did it. But I was on to my own life and I was getting ready to write my book. And this is one of the things that many people have a problem with. And this is deep in the black community, that mama stuff. You know, a lot of black women, if you don't have a good relationship with your mama, they won't date you. Regardless of the fact that your mama may be a clown. They don't want to hear that. It's like, I want a man that loves his mama and take care of his mama. So he'll treat me like that. More stupid black folks tricks. Uh, there's a reason that a lot of young black men have problems with their mothers because they're living in truth and they realize that their mother screwed them and they treat them accordingly. And a lot of these women can't understand it. Will Melvin, you're absolutely right. I doubt Barack Obama, or Bob Johnson got pulled over for while driving black. This is the message. America is a corporation. Get your money. I've put this up there. How many famous black athletes have been shot by the police? Not a one. You got this situation where um, Michael Bennett, one of the linebackers for the Seattle Seahawks, he, he put out this crazy stuff when the police said, get down, but he didn't get down. See, once again, and this is law. When the officer tells you something, they don't do it. You will have problems. 285 property, so true. No matter, I mean, seriously. And this is another issue holding back the black community. This mama stuff. DL, go ahead and get the Art of Holding Company and that will give you everything you need. I mean, you know, I'm just doing this for the whole tips today because, yes, bad things, atrocious things, inhuman things happen to black people. 2019, you could do what you want as a black person. You can go where you want. You can live where you want. You can start a business. And there's a lot of these whole tips that don't want the personal responsibility of starting a business. They want someone to give them something. Hold on now. Aaron Hernandez. He actually shot someone. And Aaron Hernandez ain't black. Aaron, Ho Aaron Hernandez was gangster. And the police didn't do anything to him. You know, rumor like he killed himself in prison. And let's look at Aaron Hernandez was a displaying ghetto behavior. Nicholas Penn, mama. Johnny Wong, I gave my mother 400 to help pay the power bill, 283, and I don't even live with her. And my brother does, and he doesn't work. I know, Flow Master. Once again, Find some black person, a famous athlete who's been shot by the police. You won't find one. 
Aaron Hernandez, he's Hispanic. And he was he was about that gangster, he was about that thug life. He did not leave that thug life behind. He kept it going on. The seller. Just did ancestry just come, found a certain percentage of me of me as African American. You never know. AJJ Poole, Aaron Hernandez hung himself when he couldn't deal with the life sentence. You know, conspiracy stuff. 89 Dr. Funk. I listened to Reginald Lewis' audiobook this morning, the first black billionaire, and he overcame a lot in his era. Blacks have it easy compared to him. This is what I'm saying. If you focus on success, you focus on building a business, you focus on doing certain things with your life that's what your results will be what you focus on is what your results will be you got a bunch of black folks out here focusing on the imaginary white racist who's out to get them boogeyman he's in that corner right there he's gonna get me it ain't true DL, you, you trying to do some Kaza Sorte stuff. Engineer Life Skills, thank you. My first mentor was Chinese. His family took me in at 12. First time intact, high expectation environment, permanently changed my life. Tried to go back to my own family, but it was like watching a train wreck. Engineer Life Skills, thanks for the $20 super chat. What you experienced was a shift in mindset. When you saw a family that was doing it the right way, and you back and you realize your family wasn't doing it the right way. 89, Dr. Funk, if you focus on racism, you will have it in your life always. Miller, the okay, dumb white guy question. Why wouldn't someone's skin is black, but they mix with many races, they only recognize the black? It depends. It depends on the person, who they choose. But society will continue to tell them they're black. Like Tiger Woods' kids will be black little children because society will say they're black. See, this is a white person situation. They started that stuff, the octoroom, mudroom, like, you know, if you had X amount of blood, of white blood in you, you were still considered black because the black outweighed the white. This is how racist these people were. They came up with Octoroon. This stuff is huge in New Orleans. You will see a certain type of black person in New Orleans. They're light complexion. They only marry their kind. Mayor Mark Morrell. Look at the family. National Flip TV. What, what did you... Where did you get that from? You are deep in the whole tip. Nobody said about anything about poor black people deserve to die. I didn't say that. No one in the chat said that. Where did you come up with that preposterous idea? Black folks always let the past dictate their future. It's a shame, man. Essentially, what, what's going to happen with poor, ghetto, hood black people is I want you to see what the future is going to be. Uh, in America, we're going to have walled cities. We're going to have gated, we already have gated communities. You will see more of that. You're going to have people with money living the nice life. And like some of these dystopian movies, you're going to have the poor people out there in the bad lands. And that's where a lot of black people are going to be in the bad lands. Because they refuse to address their thinking. They refuse to change their ways. Yep, they'll be pushed back even further. Michael Jackson kids are white. I don't believe for a minute that Michael stuck his penis in that woman. And don't, you just can't convince me. M. Jim, one drop rule still exists today. 
Modelo, many ghettos are getting gentrified and pushing the poor people out. Uh, poor people in America is a huge problem. The number of people we have living in their cars, living on their street, these tent cities, it's getting bad. Dio, no, I'm trying to set up and build a legitimate business, but project, project my efforts from a new good ex and relatives that want money from me. What you saying, Charcetta? They'd be living in the badlands. I'm telling you what's going to happen. America's developing an economic caste system. And one of the things that happens, even if you were, were grew up with middle class parents because many young blacks who have successful parents subscribe to hood culture this will have a long-term impact on their future economic prospects uh full master what's your prediction 10 to 20 years for white men um it's going to get worse for them and it the, the trend is irreversible Lazy people are going to, we're probably going to have this fixed government, this, I forget it, basic income. We're going to have them getting this and we're going to have a class of people who are living the lives they want. And we're going to have a people out there just existing. I'm jamming to this Google ad Academy, man. Good look, Sean. The youngest know the way, man. Yeah, I know, man. This thing with Mike, I just don't believe. Oh, you speak Creole. So you from the you from the you from New Orleans. You know what I'm talking about. Louis the seller. I never understood why it can't be possible to have pride in your own race without having to hate another race. You can have pride in your race. There are many cultures that have pride in their race and they don't hate anybody. This is a white person, American racist thing. It's going to get better for the entrepreneurs, the creative classes, the folks who are making money. Oh, cash system is, is here. By basic income, you mean welfare state, the white red men. Pretty much. I mean, they ain't going to give you ball or money. You just going to have a little money to subsist on, to exist. I mean, essentially, you got all these people right now who just existing. And, you know, to even get more caustic, 10% of the population IQ is so low that they can only do menial, you know, like custodian work, cleaning work. And then you add another 15% of people who have been kicked off of the economic ladder. That's 25% of the population that doesn't have viable economic means. That's a lot of people to support. Two eight five properly. Most youngins don't see color off. No, I've been talking about this for years. Young folks don't care. This is why the future is going to be very different. Will Melvin, all oh, Creoles are light skin. Those are the ones that are just uh, advertise it. My grandmother's Creole and she's jet black. With this specific knowledge, it's sad Negroes rather be on IG and World Star, World Star, World Star, World Star, but not taking the gems and Googles. And you know, a lot of people want to be what they want to be. What a man thinks about the most is what he will be. And a big part of this is the mindset, the winner's mindset. One of the reasons that I'm, you know, and, I, and once again, I got to say. It's getting easier to have these conversations because when I had these conversations five, six, seven years ago, I got lit up in the comments. So thank y'all. Uh, but notice how we come together. 
Yeah, like uh, 9-11. There was no crime in New York for a few days. That's how scared people were. But essentially, you know, it's easier to have these conversations because more people are opening up their eyes and their understanding. What you think about, you know, if you're a black person, you need to stop focusing on your blackness. Uh, one of the sad things I've seen with people with these mindsets is these videos on YouTube. I went to Japan, how they treat black people in Japan. You know, I lived in Japan for six months and then didn't have a problem. And I'm like, I was there. They didn't act like that. You know, Europe for black people. So when you have someone with this racist, you know, they, they out to get me mindset, they'll go out and put some information that is patently false and then have people sharing it and disseminating it. So, you know, the message today is don't worry about racism. Don't think about racism. Think about your future. Think about where you want to be. Think about where you want your family to be and focus on that. And when someone comes up with you with this race war stuff, just shake your head and don't digest that because this country has been through a lot. And we just got folks, you know, the next war is going to be economic. It's not going to be no race war. We, we're in the economic war. This is where you got to do. So don't don't be concentrating on race. Don't get caught up in it because it will pause in your mindset. Like it almost pause in mine. All right. So with that, I'll catch you people later. You know, if you got any questions, don't email me a question after a live stream. I'm going to try to do these live streams twice a day. So you come hit these live streams and we will talk about your problems in your situation. So with that, also, for those of you who need help, under the live stream are a group of courses. You know, I recommend a lot of you get 30 days to um, 2,500. And also, I should do this. I think you should, everybody needs to get this course. Let me go here. Money. Everybody needs to get this course right here. All right. I don't know. Money management, the basics of finance and wealth development. Go ahead. The uh, links below. Get this course. Uh, I had a wonderful, uh, you know, below the video for folks who want to reach out for more specialized. I am doing consulting again. So there's ways for you to book appointments below the video. And uh, go ahead and get that because that's going to set you up financially to make more money because the first rule of thumb is you got to manage the money you're already making very well so this will help you do that so links below go ahead and grab that and let me see Dude, I've been on O'Shea's show talking the same stuff I'm talking right now. Once again. So with that, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.